It's shortly after midnight on August 20th, 2008. Jonathan Muse left home on his bicycle to go visit his girlfriend, and he never made it. So here's his story. He had a heart bigger than all of outdoors. He would do anything for anybody. He just had this personality that attracted people to him. You talked to him for five minutes and you were his buddy. He cooked. He cooked so good and people used to come over all the time so they could eat and they used to ask him to cook. Jonathan was into everything as far as sports and activities are concerned. He played hockey, baseball, soccer. That was his favorite and skateboarding. And he never sat in the house and played video games. He just couldn't deal with that. He wanted to be outside, climbing a tree. He just was not an indoors kid. He wasn't a real good student, but that's okay. He tried real hard. He has two older brothers. Uh, they're both in the Marine Corps. He drove his brothers crazy. He was a thinker. He liked to take everything apart. If you were missing a Game Boy, you'd find it in the bathroom drawer all taken apart. He wanted to see how it worked because video games meant nothing to him. All that stuff meant nothing to him. He wanted to see how it worked inside. And Jonathan was the, uh, the one that always got in trouble. He liked to do things his way and he wasn't real good with um, conforming. I used to think if I could steer him in the right direction, he could rule the world. He was that strong and that stubborn in his ideals and what he believed in. He always fought for what was right and what he felt was right. And um, that was Jonathan. He had so many friends, so many people loved him. I'm at Pioneer and the 91 Freeway, and there's this kid here zooms over his bike. So I'm walking up to him now to check him. Is he shot, or do you know what's wrong with him? No, he's not shot, I don't think. Okay. Jonathan. Do you know him? He's a friend of mine. I need to check on him. I want to check Are you in front of him and see if he's in front of him? On August 20th, 2008, a little after midnight, a passerby found uh, our victim, Jonathan Muse. He was on Pioneer Boulevard at the underpass to the 91 freeway. He was actually lying on the sidewalk and still straddling his bicycle. All we know is that Jonathan uh, had left his home sometime in the night of August 19th, 2008 and was heading to visit a friend. Uh, we know that at one point he stopped uh, and actually walked into a Walgreens uh, located in the city of Artesia, walked in and out, was there for about a minute. One of the possibilities of what happened to Jonathan was that he was riding his bicycle under the freeway and a vehicle pulled up alongside him and shots were fired. It's also possible that a local street gang uh, may have actually shot him, uh, mistaking him for perhaps a rival gang member. So at this point we don't know. Jonathan's uh, attackers or attacker could have been on foot, on a bike, or in a vehicle. The California Highway Patrol received a 911 phone call from a passerby who had actually found Jonathan uh, lying on the sidewalk and still straddling his bicycle and non-responsive. Uh, at the time, it was believed to be a medical rescue call, and when fire department personnel arrived on scene, they realized that Jonathan had actually suffered from gunshot wounds. Jonathan was transported to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. It's around 4 a.m. The sound is still in my head. Tick, 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 tick on my door, tick, 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 tick. And I yelled, who is it? And they said, Sheriff's Department. I remember backing into my shower and them following me in. I didn't want to hear anything because I didn't know what they were gonna say. I wish they would have said he was in jail. I was not prepared for Jonathan's dead. Due to the fact that we have no witnesses on this case, we have absolutely no idea what our suspect description is. If they were on a bike or a vehicle, what that description would be. Um, we're hoping that maybe, maybe a passerby uh, saw what actually occurred or what actually happened to our victim, Jonathan. How do you murder somebody and keep going? I don't know how you do that. It's been three years. You go to the movies? Do you take a bath? Do you go on dates? What did you eat for dinner last night? How do you look at your mother in the face, your children, knowing what you've done? How do you do that? Who took my son? Who decided he shouldn't live anymore? Jonathan actually had two brothers uh, who both are serving for our country in Iraq. 
and one in fact was in Iraq at the time of this murder. Imagine that you're serving in Iraq and you come to find out that your brother was killed back in LA. It was devastating for Christopher, very devastating. He said that he was sorry he was gone. If he'd have been home, maybe things might be different. It is torture every second of every single day. The street that he died on, it's a busy street. There's a freeway overpass. There's restaurants, there's gas stations, there's a 24-hour Walgreens. I know somebody saw something. And we just want to reach out to people to ask them for help on this case. We have, we have nothing, we don't have any witnesses. If you saw a boy on a bike, try to remember. Please don't do this to my family. I think we have a right to know. All too often, we hear of young men ripped from their families for no apparent reason. So if you know who did this, if you have any information, you have the power to stop this madness and perhaps save the next would-be victim from this killer.